Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. Greetings from Chicago land. This is Munira, the niche navigator, coming to you live with another episode of Munira's Musings. How are you, everybody? How was your weekend? We have a wonderful guest here, a vice principal who has a good RX to living your life to fulfillment. Welcome to our show, Tanika Henry. Hi, Manira. Thank you so much for having me. You are most welcome. We do these shows because we want everybody to understand that life to your dream is not easy. Life, uh, the journey has to be taken. The voyage has to be embarked upon and it's not easy so sometimes during that voyage you have some storms and you have some indecisiveness or some sometimes your doubts but whatever it is everybody who comes on this show or everybody that has fi- found something great in their life has walked through that walk has found you know has taken that voyage and has overcome whatever doubts whatever issues they have. So with that, I want to share um, Tanika. I want her to share her story to us. And Tanika, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, what you said is so spot on. Um, so I come from an education background. I um, was a teacher and then I was a school counselor. And now I'm an assistant principal. And funny thing is that throughout my journey, like I, I feel like I always knew what I wanted to do or no, I take that back. I knew what I didn't want to do, but I didn't always know what I wanted to do. So that's where it gets a little sticky (laughs) is trying to figure out that component. So another thing that I learned about myself growing up is that I like to do things for a certain period of time and then I'm ready to move on to something else. So that has been like, an evolving theme throughout my professional career and even just personally, honestly. So I started off as a teacher. I taught elementary school and I loved it. Um, Ironically, I went to college for education, but I really didn't want to be a teacher. Like I knew I loved working with kids. And so I wanted to be a child psychologist. And um, So I go to college thinking I'm going to be a child psychologist. My mom registered me and she registered me to be an education major. And I'm like, I told you I want to be a psychologist, (laughs) but she registered me to be an education major. And she and my dad both have education degrees. So I totally wanted to do something that my family was not doing. Um, My sister also was an educator. So I just wanted to break the mold. But lo and behold, I ended up going into education and it was, it was destined for me to do. So anyways, I go into education. I teach um, second, third, and fourth grades for a few years. And like probably around year four, I was ready to do something different. So I go and get a a master's degree in school counseling. And I was a school counselor for about seven years as well. And, um, And I would say probably around year four or five, I was definitely ready to do something different. Um, And I had already gone back to school to get a a specialist degree in administration. So, you know, I had put this, um, planted the seeds to be able to elevate myself to different positions. And so then that moved me. So then I moved into an assistant principal position and that's where it got tricky because year four came and I was like, so I'm ready to do something different. But this time, unlike the previous positions, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so it became increasingly more difficult for me because, you know, I started having the strong desire to do something different. And unfortunately, the natural next progression that everyone told me I should do, I didn't want to do. Like that just wasn't for me in that time. So what was the thing that they told everybody told you to do? Oh, I should be a principal. <laughs> ah, you know, I'm right. Yeah, you know, if you're an assistant principal, the natural next progression would be a principal. And so, you know, my life at that time, that just was not, 
that was not something that I desired and it just didn't work for my life in that moment. Like I have two parents who have some very serious medical um, conditions and I need to be available to go and be with them. And I travel to be with them once a month. And um, so I just need that time. And when you're a principal, you just can't up and leave. <laughs> you know, like you gotta run your building. So you're not responsible for just your class. You're responsible for the whole school and, yeah. the staff and everything that goes with it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, I have a lot of responsibilities now, but thankfully I have I, my current principal and the one that I had before her, they've just been so understanding of my situation. And obviously I get all my work done and I leave the school in a good position, but they've all been so um, supportive knowing what my situation is that they, you know, they grant me the grace to be able to do what I need to do for my family and return back to work. Um, so anyways, with that being said, I knew I didn't want to go that route, but I didn't know what I wanted, which made it that much more difficult because when you know what you want to do, you do it, <laughs> right? Sure, sure. I'm so much of an action oriented person. So if I set a goal to do something, I'm going to do it. Like I am very determined and very disciplined. So not knowing was driving me crazy. So I went on an intentional growth journey because I was like, okay, I don't know what it is, but I know that I'll figure it out. So I went on an intentional growth journey and I just got super curious. And I just started asking different people like, what do you do? Like, let me, can you kind of shed some light on what your role is? And it was people who were still in education, but outside of the building and, you know, the schoolhouse. And so I would call different people and ask them if I could, you know, have time with them to just ask them questions. And everyone was so gracious and willing to grant me time to just kind of interview them and talk about what they do. And then I ran across, oh, well, let me tell you. <laughs> so I, th th <laughs> so I will say though, even though I didn't want to be a principal in that time, people kept pushing me to do it, right? So a position became available. So people were like, Tanika, just apply, just do it. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready. We'll help you in the position. Okay, fine. So I go and I apply. I spent the whole summer interviewing for principal positions because one for one position, it's three interviews. So I, I did this, I went on the interview, well, three interviews for one position. Then there was another position that came up and I got a phone call and they were like, hey, would you please apply for this position also? Okay, okay. <laughs> So that's now six interviews <laughs> back to back to back. And so I'm like, you know, I was honored that someone, you know, that people felt that I was qualified for the position. In my heart of hearts, was that really what I wanted? No, but did I commit to the process? A hundred percent. Once I started, you know, the process of interviewing, I was fully committed and invested emotionally at that point, you know? So lo and behold, six interviews later, I didn't get either of the positions, neither one. <laughs> no, this is a sign. Right, exactly. That's exactly how I saw it, Manira. It was not meant for me. And soon thereafter, I realized that was God. That was, those positions were not for me. And that was the best thing that could have happened. So fast forward, I'm like, okay, so this is not for me, clearly. So what is, you know, I'm still on this journey trying to figure it out. And so, um, so. You know so, what we call this process, right? We call it discover your why. There it is, <laughs> there it is. And so finally, after talking to several people, like I said, I was very intentional, very intentionally curious. So after talking to several people, I ran into a lady at one of, it was a mutual friend of ours. She was getting her doctorate degree and she had a celebration 
and this lady was there. And again, so number one, I'm just naturally inquisitive by nature. So when I meet people, I tend to ask a lot of questions just because I'm curious to know about them. So anyways, so I met this lady and you know we were just chatting, small talk. And then I was like, oh, well, what do you do? And she's like, well, I own my own leadership consulting business. And I was like, tell me about that. Cause I'm like, I'm in leadership. I want to know all about that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. And so, um, so we started talking, come to find out she's a member of the John Maxwell team and she worked with John Maxwell. And, and, you know, for the people who don't know John Maxwell, he's one of the leadership gurus and has written so many books. And so, you know, after she shared that with me and I knew who John Maxwell was too, because of my studies from grad school. Um, and so I just started talking to her and asking even more questions. And so then that led to me working with John Maxwell as well. And that just was the start of this incredible Journey. business that, that I have going now. So that's where I started and, you know, where I am now. So where are you now? So now I have, I am the founder and CEO of GrowthWorks RX, which is a personal growth and leadership development firm. And I am coaching professional women to help them find their, um, find their why, find their purpose and walk in that so that they too can live a life of fulfillment and walk with um, power and confidence to be able to live a life that is not only fulfilling to them, but a life that they dream about. So you didn't even have a dream. I didn't. <laughs> so this is fell in your lap. Yeah. All you um, knew was you didn't want to be an you didn't want to be a principal. That's all you knew. That's and you know, all I had. That's the one thing that everybody needs to start with because I was listening to my mentor. I have a few. I'm a John Maxwell certified coach as well, but I have other few mentors too. And what he said was have a not to do list. Write mm. a list of what you don't want to do, right? Or write it down. Because when you have a not to do list, you know you're not going to go touch that, right? And so we all are on a journey. We're trying to figure out what our purpose is, why we are here on this earth. And as the niche navigator, that's exactly where I lay the foundation because most people don't even know, right? So you say you're the CEO of Growth RX. You are a principal. Why do you use RX? It's, it's a prescription. Yeah, it is. It's because twofold, because I do have a PhD, so I am a doctor and I'm prescribing the growth plan for the people that I work with. Love that. Love that. <laughs> no, but, I, and I would like, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that to add to what you were just saying about having a not to do list, I think that's important. But I also think that it's important that if you have something on that not want to do list, that if it's the recurring theme that keeps coming back to you, then you might want to investigate it a little bit further. And the reason why I say that is because at one point, I was not in a mindset where I wanted to be a coach. And my thought behind that was, there are 50 million coaches in this world. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do kind of similar to what I thought when I was going into college, not wanting to be in education. I don't want to do what everybody else does. And so I didn't want to do what everyone else does. And when you go on Facebook, there are a million coaches, you know? And so, but I, it, it kept coming around in, in my spirit. It finally sparked a fire and it finally resonated with me because I was at a place where I was ready to receive that. And so to go back to what you were saying, I definitely think it's important to create a not want to do list. But if there's something on that list that you put down and it keeps coming back, be open to investigating that a little bit further because it could end up being something that you're supposed to do. But sometimes, you know, like what you said is so correct because when sometimes when you have a not to do list and this thing keeps coming back, you may not like be an educator, like 
I'll, I'll give you my story. When I was back home in Kenya, I was a teacher, right? So I've always taught, I've always taught. And then I came here and I did a few courses and I had became a mentor. I was working in a, uh, like a Jesse Penny store in California, mm -hmm. something similar. And I would teach others, new hires to do certain things a certain way, right? So that teaching has always been there. And mm -hmm. just get enhanced, it gets enhanced when you are working and then you have to teach your team members to do something that out of the box. And then it grows from there where you now are a coach and you have to teach people to think a certain way. And oh yeah. It, you, we give you we give uh, several different names, you mentor, you coach, or all those things. But in essence, you are teaching. So yes. you, you cannot always just say, this is not for me. You might want to look at a different flavor. It's like cooking mac pasta or you, I don't want to make pasta, but you're not just boiling it. You may want to create a new sauce and instill it into your pasta. Absolutely. So that's what I'm saying. And I love the fact that you said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse Bless me. Bless you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Continue. <laughs> Let's continue. So, um, so you, you found this purpose and you find you're helping professional women so when you are prescribing your growth plan let me go back a little bit before you before i go to this question you said you spoke to several people mm -hmm. they were they were telling you kind of pushing you towards to go towards the being a principal what was the one thing that you heard from everybody when you were interviewing people while you were looking for your growth plan yourself? <laughs> well, ironically, <laughs> one of the, yeah. So <laughs> one particular, say it's, it again. Maybe a recurring thing. Um, well, I don't necessarily know if there was a recurring theme, but there were two women who I spoke to specifically, and one, and they're both in higher, you know, positions in two totally different school districts in two different parts of the country. And when I was speaking to them, one of them said, "If you don't want to be a principal, don't be a principal." <laughs> and I thought, sounds so easy, right? But again, in my mind, I'm thinking that's all. I know that's, you know what I mean? And so what she said, and I'll never forget this. She said, everything doesn't have to be linear, Tanika. Like you don't have to do, do it like this. Like there's ways that you can get to where you're supposed to be and not necessarily have to go up. You can go out and that doesn't, that's, that doesn't take away from you, you know, and, and your level of achievement and accomplishment. So if that's not what you want to do, don't do it. And so that was so profound and impactful. And to be honest, I had to do some like um, deprogramming of some of the things that have been instilled in me and taught to me from childhood up, you know what I mean? And so while that was a powerful message that I still hold on to today, it took me having to get out of my own way to be able to receive that message. So. Oh. See, that's awesome. So th th that's the thing, right? You don't have to climb you don't have to go from one to two to three to yeah four. there's infinity steps but you can go jump twos maybe fours maybe sevens and then go back to fives who knows right whatever mm -hmm. i'm just giving you but there's a different way to do this and, and when i talk to different people when we we have clients talking to each other and when we talk to people people are just so afraid of taking mm -hmm. the next step because they have they think everything has to be linear. They think that if they don't do the next step that's right in front of them, then they are going to fail. Because yeah. they have to take the next step. But I ask people all the time, is like, have you taken steps that are twos? You've always missed the second one. Have you ever done that? And we've done that when we were kids, right? I see my grandkids, they jump through the stairs the same way. Hey, I can jump and then they fall 
and then get up and then do the same thing again. So if the yeah. kid can do it, why can't we? Right? Absolutely. <clears throat> I love so that. When you teach growth, right? You just said to me that there are women out there who are in awesome positions. I used to be in the pharma world. That's why when I said Rx, I was right there. It's in the pharma world. And I have met exceptional leaders who are CEOs, CFOs of hospitals, right? And not just one hospital. They conduct business everywhere. And these are women, powerful women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always been in awe with them. It's like, how did you get here, right? And some people like, you know, I just kept going. I kept going. And, for you know, so so to me, it's like we women are all ready to overtake the world. <laughs> but then there are some women who you coach, like who I coach, who are not ready to find their niche or discover their why or figure out their purpose, whatever you whatever name you call it. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. What do you want to tell those women? Who are if they're not guidelines and cheering others on, but not taking the first step for themselves. Oh, well, in my opinion, I strongly believe in the law of rhythm, like things ebb and flow in your life. And so if you currently are in a place where either one, you're comfortable, life is right where you want it to be, and it's good for you right now, I think that's fantastic. But just by nature, there's gonna come a time where you start to get uncomfortable. And when that time comes, you really wanna be able to get in tune with what is, what is it that you wanna do next? Like what, what's causing this level of um, uneasiness or discomfort? And so when that happens, you really have to start looking inward internally to figure out like, what is it that you want? You know, what do you desire in your life? And so that's when the work starts to begin and it's good work, you know, it's a little challenging, but it's so worth it. And so for those people who step on the, um, stand on the sidelines, I would say, get in the game. There's no reason to stand on the sidelines. Your life is passing you by. We only get one chance to get this thing called life right. And so instead of getting a life that, the universe gives to you, let's have the life that we want. Let's create the life we want. Let's not stand for or settle for what we get. Let's create what we want. So there's no need to stand on the sidelines. I mean, there are plenty of people who are just natural helpers and supporters, but that's not all you're called to do. You can be a supporter and a helper and uplift people while doing it yourself, while being in the game yourself, like there's just no reason you can have both. And so it might be fulfilling for people to be on the sidelines and be in the supportive nature. I know many women like that. They love to, you know, encourage and support and motivate people. We call those people pushers. They love to support people, but pushers also need to be pushed. And so we just have to ensure that they get the support that they need so that they're also living a life that's meaningful to them as well. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Tanika, where do we find you? You can find me at Tanika Henry on Facebook. I am TL Henry 2 on Instagram. I have a group for women called Growth Works. Rx with Tanika Henry. And I also have a guide to help professional women live a fulfilled life without guilt or overwhelm. Because in talking to women, I realized that those are some of the things that they feel are challenging them, which is that they want to help other people. They give so much to other people and they feel like it's selfish to then turn inward and do what they want to do. And so I want to like demystify that and help empower them to live a fulfilled life and do it without feeling guilty or even overwhelmed with all the things that they have going on. So if um, people are interested in that, I will certainly have the free gift and put it um, in the comments for people to be able to um, grab that. That would be awesome. So watch out in the comment section where Tanika is going to share that for, for her. She's also going to, does that include your contact information as well? Absolutely. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And if 
Yeah, I'm sorry. My email is Tanika at TanikaHenry.com. That's T-A-N-I-K-A. So those are ways that you can reach me. There you go. And so for ladies and gentlemen, right? It's not only for the ladies, but she teaches the ladies. I teach, I teach everybody. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, you need to know where you are, right? Mm -hmm. And where you want to go. Most people don't even know where you want to go, but that's okay because yeah. you'll figure it out. That's right. But be uncomfortable, be anxious, be in that position where you feel that there's more out there and you need to go get it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are, yeah, if you are there, then you can create your own destiny and drive this ship that you are on a voyage on to wherever you want to go. Mm -hmm. It may sound easy, it is not, but I told you in the beginning that you have to weather your storms, you have to figure it all out, but you don't have to figure it out before you get there. You can figure it out as you go along. Absolutely. We, as coaches, don't have all the answers but when we talk to our clients we have the foresight to see what they are missing and we help plug those holes in that vessel that they are maneuvering to their voyage right absolutely so, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen if you like this show go ahead like share and subscribe to our channel because we will be back next monday with an exceptional guest that will change possibly change your life again every week like we do. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Manira. Thank you, Tanika.